Hey, this is Kim. Sewing with a projector is the latest thing out there. And you might be asking yourself, do I need one? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. If you want to take your sewing to the next level, you are in the right place. So today I want to talk to you all about sewing with a projector. But first, I want to just uh, say that I'm really happy to be back behind the camera. I took a week off last week because it was the last week my husband would be home before starting his new job. We had our little pretend five-month retirement thanks to COVID. And um, yeah, I kind of liked having him home, although I'm really glad he's going to get a paycheck now. <laughs> so I guess there's good sides and downsides to everything, but I, I kind of took a week off just to spend time with him before he went back to work. So today I'm going to start a series. I'm probably going to do one or two videos a week on this topic. I'll intersperse it with some pattern reviews and whatnot, but I would like to do about a six part series on using a projector for sewing. It is a huge mystery to some people and just the best thing since sliced bread to others. So I'm gonna give you the information you need either to get started or to know whether or not it is for you. Um, a lot of people are just plain curious and that's where I found myself. I wanna start with my first thoughts when I heard that people were sewing with projectors. It sort of took me by surprise. I don't know why, because I'm kind of a techie person, but my initial thing was no. <laughs> I think um, it hurt my brain to think about how you would go about doing it. And then the more I kind of looked into it, the more I saw some benefits to that. So my initial reaction was somewhere between how cool and uh, no way. <laughs> So that's probably close to what you're feeling if you haven't yet taken that step. And so I want to just show you the benefits, the, the upsides, the downsides, the how to um, take a little mystery out of it for you. And that way you can make an informed decision of whether or not that is what you would like to do. Or maybe you're just going to get started with it. If so, I hope to give you just the information you need to get started. So I've been doing projector sewing now for a couple months and I really enjoy it. I'll say that I'm completely sold on the idea now. Just from the standpoint of saving time, I'm blown away by how much time it saves me and how much I can spend my time on the creative side of sewing rather than on the taping and printing and, you know, busy, uh, menial things, which I used to say I enjoyed taping patterns together. And that's true, I did. But when I decided to go with a projector, I had just come out of sewing, I don't know how many gifts for Christmas, a lot. And I had taped so many patterns together and I literally had wasted days doing that. So I thought maybe I should look into this. So I started to begin to look and see how people were doing it, you know, got my questions kind of answered. And so that's where I'd like to start with you. So the first question is, does it save time? And actually, once you get everything set up and working, it saves a huge amount of time. I actually timed myself before my projector was hung up. I decided to time how long it takes me to put an average pattern together. So I was gonna make a Harper cardigan for my daughter-in-law and she's in a completely different size. So I printed it out, taped it together and I literally spent an hour and a half easily doing just that. But if you add that up over how many, I do like six or seven projects a month. So if you add up, you, you've missed a whole day of sewing over a month's time or, or even more. So. It does save time. Now, initially there's a time investment for getting up and going, but honestly, I found that to be very minimal. And I, I'll share with you in the next video, we're gonna talk about calibration, and I will share with you just some ways you can make that easier. 
So the next question I had was, can it save me money? Well, initially you think, wow, that's a big investment, but I'm also going to tell you how very little I did spend on my projector. You don't think about how much paper you use and tape. You just don't think about it. And I always was very frugal and used the, uh, both sides of the paper and all those things. And even with one of the newer Epson EchoTank printers, um, I was doing a lot of printing. And so I don't know that it really like saves a ton of money. The other thing is that time is money. Um, especially if you're doing a home business. If you're doing sewing for a business, this is a no-brainer because time is money. And so if you have to tape together uh, patterns for each job that you do, that's going to really add up and eat into your time. And you want your precious time to be spent either doing the sewing or spending time with your family. So to me, it was a way to free myself into going, oh, I think I'll make this today and being able to just put it up on the projector and do it instead of printing the pattern, taping it. You know, there's just a lot of time involved in all of that and time is money. The other thing is I bought my projector right before Christmas, but I didn't want to be getting used to it while I was doing all this Christmas sewing because I had a massive amount to sew. So I was really aware of how long it was taking me to put together patterns um, for Christmas. So I spent days doing that over Christmas and I can't wait because next Christmas I should be able to breeze through all the projects because you don't need to print, you don't need to tape and line everything up. It's already done for you. And most of the indie pattern companies are now including projector files. Even if they're not, you can probably get away with using the large format file if you need to. So you can actually get more things sewn for the same time investment. So let's talk about expense. So first off, you're going to need a iPad or a computer. So I use the iPad Pro. I use it for everything. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video coming up of how I use my iPad Pro for sewing. And it'll amaze you how many things I actually use it for. And truthfully, I already had my iPad Pro when I decided to get a projector. So I would just say right now that I'm not including my iPad or computer in this cost because I feel like we all have something that will work already. So I spent $140. That's it. I spent $140 on the projector, the mount, and a um, ceiling fixture, and even this beautiful bright LED light that I have. So that's it. That's all I spent. I took out a ceiling fan, which in a way, I, I'm going to miss it, I'm sure, but not really because of the benefit of having the projector up there. Obviously you can't have a ceiling fan hitting a projector, so that had to go. But I'm really thrilled with my setup and I literally spent only $140. I will post a link below to my Amazon influencer store. I will have a list of the things that I purchased for my projector, just so you have a reference for what I got. So in that $140 actually also includes an app that I use. Um, there's a several out there that you can use, but I uh, tend to like Affinity Designer. Uh, Affinity Designer is my um, app of choice to use for a lot of reasons, and I'm going to go into that in another video as well. But, but just to give you the lowdown on that, that cost me literally 10 bucks. Right now, the Affinity um, people at Serif.com is the name of the company and all of their products right now for Affinity are half off. So it was a $10 one time and it is as powerful as Adobe Illustrator and a little easier to use. So the iPad app for Affinity Designer is only $10 and the computer version of the same is on sale for $25. So Super no-brainer. Um, they're very user-friendly and there's a lot of help out there. So, and I'm actually going to show you exactly how I use Affinity Designer in, in an upcoming video. So that was my initial expense, $140.
So to me, that was a pretty low risk venture. So next, you're going to want to think about what type of projector that you want. Now there is a Facebook group, and I will link it down in the description, called Projectors for Sewing, and they have a lot of projectors and their reviews uh, in the announcements in that group. It's a wonderful group to be part of, and they are wonderful at helping people get started. So I belong to that group, and I kind of I've gone from someone who's asking all the questions to someone who's answering them. So I feel like they've really helped me a lot. Um, so the basically the types of projectors that you're going to look at, um, you want something you can mount on the ceiling or the wall, depending on what type you have. Probably the biggest consideration you're going to have if you want to put it on the ceiling is the distance from the ceiling to your table. And if it's less than 59 inches, you might want to consider doing a uh, ultra short throw projector. They are a bit more expensive, which is why I did not do that, but they do have a larger area that they display. So it's just kind of a, you know, what, what you can do. Now for me, I have a small table. Admittedly, this is a small cutting table. I'm in a bedroom. My sewing room is a, my daughter's former bedroom. So I don't have room for a larger table than what I have. And it doesn't quite fill up my table. My ceiling is about, I think, exactly 63 inches above my table. And I get an image that's about, oh, about 30 by 20, something like that. So it's pretty good size, but there are a lot of times when I can only cut a partial piece and I have to then move but it's, it's really super easy to do. So, and I'm gonna show you that as well. Um, so this distance suits me just fine because I don't have a large, large table. Now, if you're used to working on a large cutting surface, then you might wanna consider one of the ultra short throws. Another reason that someone might want that one over a ceiling mounted one is um, if you're in a rental, maybe you can't put anything on your ceiling that's another way then you can do it. Now the ultra short throws can either sit on the table or on a wall next to the table. I obviously with a small table that wouldn't work for me because I need all the space I can get to actually cut patterns. So, so I would just say, you know, it just depends on what works for your space. So my criteria were that I wanted it to be ceiling mounted. I didn't want any wires, no wires. So I used my iPad. The projector that I bought um, talks to my iPad, so I don't need anything extra there. It, um, it's controlled completely by my iPad um, and a remote control, so I don't have to get up there and touch anything. I just My husband helped me calibrate it, and I haven't touched it since. So it's uh, really super simple. And I bought a light fixture that had a plug, so I'm able to plug the projector into that. I'm going to show you a picture here of how it's set up. And basically I can turn my light off with a cord and then just have the, the projector on. Um, I do have an ot light for extra light in this room that I turn on when I'm cutting because I don't want to cut completely in the dark. And basically I have no cords. That's, I have, it's all up there. There's nothing going down my walls. I really didn't want that. So I searched until I found you know, what I needed to do that. And I was very, very pleased at how easy that was to figure out. And like I said, I don't have a huge uh, area that it throws, but it works for me. There are ways around it, you know, um, and I'm gonna show you how to, you know, cut part of a pattern and then move everything. There's a way to do it, it's pretty easy. And honestly, I was doing that already with paper, so you know, that's really, that wasn't even a factor of consideration for me because I knew I'd have to, I have to do this on this table. It doesn't fit a whole pair of pants, no matter what. So, um, I'm used to that. Now let's talk about how you get projector files. Well, most of the indie companies are now offering projector files, at least with their newer patterns. But honestly, if they offer a copy shop pattern, you can actually use that. It's, no, they're usually pretty easy to adapt to those. Um, what you might want to do is go to either your favorite software program that does this or there's a, 
online um, PDF resizer that you can get that will add margins so that you can actually move it around a little bit more. Now, a lot of people like to be able to lay all their pattern pieces out and have the whole table covered. I tend to be one that will cut one piece and then, you know, find another spot to cut another piece out. This helps me because it conserves fabric. So that's how I do it anyway. So that's, you know, to me, um, I don't need it to be all laid out. <clears throat> another way you can get a projector file is you can digitize yourself. Let's say you have a pair of tried and true pants that you've worked on with. Back when we did the pants fitting series, maybe you have a perfectly good fitting pair of pants and you want to digitize that crotch curve at least to use on other patterns. You can actually um, photograph it. This is a video I'm going to do in this series of how to convert a tried and true pattern into a digital pattern so that you can have all of those things at your um, fingertips. So you won't have to do anything except pull up that file. And I think it's just so freeing. And yes, I am a techie, so that does help. But honestly, this is really, really, really not that hard. So I want you to promise me one thing as we go through this series, you will not say, I can't do it. No, I can't. Because honestly, it's not that hard. Calibrating, if you have a couple things right, it's not going to be that difficult. Um, I had mine up and running in about 20 minutes. So... Um, basically it's a two person job to calibrate because one person needs to measure and the other person move but after that's done you're good so I guess my encouragement to you is to uh, keep an open mind about it uh, watch this video series so there's going to be an opportunity for you to ask me questions as well um, as you know I do the chats on Sunday that would be a perfect time to bring a projector question and also I may, at the end of this series, go ahead and take uh, questions from you guys and just have one video be answering questions. So stay tuned for more on projectors and I think you're gonna, you're gonna love it. And can I just say, if you test patterns, oh my goodness, how many of you, I test patterns a lot and I have already printed something, gone to, you know, gotten it all taped together and then gotten that email from the designer saying, here's the new version. Have you been there? If you test patterns, you probably have. Well, with a projector, they usually have the projector files and you don't have to do that anymore. You just pull up the last one when you're ready to cut. And that makes that process a hundred million times easier. So, all right, so have a fantastic day and I will see you soon. I have a pattern review coming up this week as well. I also want to point out, if you like this jacket, stay tuned for that too. That will be coming up. Um, it'll be an upcoming release. I'm not going to tell you any more about it, but you'll love it. So if you've been paying attention, you probably already know what it is. It's a pattern that's under testing right now and I love it. So... Anyway, have a fantastic day. I will talk to you soon. Happy sewing. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Oh, too